Good morning. The entrance hymn is number 304, Our God is Here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, brothers and sisters. This Holy Eucharistic celebration is offered pro popul for all the people of the church, for all the people of the parish. And so, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, every all the angels and saints, and you, you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, to pray, to pray for, for me to the Lord, Lord our, God. our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing, break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoard but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of the host is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plan. He looked for judgment, but see, bloodshed. For justice, but hark, the outcry. The word of the Lord. And speak to God. Give us new life. 
St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am chosen you from the world, says the Lord, to go and bear fruit. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he listed it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put th those wretched men to a wretched death and leave his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the corner stone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruits. The Gospel of the Lord.
the ending <clears throat> of the first reading remind us what the, litur the scripture for today's liturgy is all about. It presents the uh, metaphor, the image, that the vineyard is the people of God, the house of God. And uh, God, in, in creating this vineyard, in setting it up, he had done everything that a good vineyard requires to produce a, a good harvest. He had cleared the land, make a, a protecting wall around it, uh, planted all the best uh, choices of, of vines. Uh, but in the end, wild grapes come from it. And so the question is, what is the prophet Isaiah, son, 900 years before Jesus Christ, is speaking about? What is it that is behind this very powerful and very really understandable uh, description of what it is to have a good vineyard, a good farm to produce good grapes to make a good wine? Well, the conclu the, uh, I think the, the response to this question, after what, what is it that Isaiah is speaking, it is also found in the gospel, where <clears throat> Jesus refers to that same imagery, to that same metaphor, to speak about what he says at the end to us. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. Why? Because not only God has created this, this uh, plantation, this farm, this vineyard, and give it everything that it needs to produce a good harvest, but those who are given interest to take care of it have not done so. To the point of, because Jesus expands that metaphor of Isaiah, that, that metaphor, and on top of God having given it everything that is needed for, a, for the vineyard to have a good harvest, he also adds that God, in his wonderful wisdom, sent to this vineyard his prophets. Those are uh, the people that the Lord sent to, to take care of this place. He began by saying, of course, he's speaking again with the chief priests and the elders of the people who don't understand who Jesus is uh, is and what is he all about. Here another parable. God planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine place in it, and built a tower. Everything that is needed to have this vineyard very well cared. And then he listed to some tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants, the prophets, the messengers of God. <clears throat> but the servants, instead of hearing the prophets, instead of receiving the message from God regarding this, um, this plantation, which is God's people, we belong to God, they rejected. And uh, not only rejected it, but they really did bad things to them. That's what Isaiah is speaking in the first of the readings in Matthew in today's gospel. God created everything that there is, and within it, we are part of that vineyard. And God has given us everything 
to have this <clears throat> orchard, this vineyard, to produce good harvest. And along the way, God has sent us his messengers to let us know how we are doing. It. Are we really uh, producing good harvest or not? But instead of listening to the message of God's prophets, of God's messengers, and they even exist now, of course, they are rejected. And so, at the end, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ our Lord. But also, he was put to death. We know this. We believe this. We profess this. We celebrate this, as we said, every time we, we celebrate the Eucharist. Because... As human beings, sometimes we are very stubborn. And even when we know that God is speaking to us and, and letting us know how it is that we can be good harvests, that we can be good grapes to produce good wine, we reject it. We don't follow that. And instead... We say no to God himself who is fully present in Jesus Christ. And that's why he used the imagery today of the foundation of any good house, of any good building. The rock that will give everything that is needed to have a good, a stable um, Life firmly planted in this, uh, on this earth. The stone, Jesus Christ, that the builders rejected is the corner stone. And it is the only one who really can give us the foundation that we need to truly be good producing grapes. In this, in this world. I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, according to St. John in today's Alleluia, to go and bear fruit that will remain. It's the same message in all the scriptures this weekend. God has given us the gift of life and offer us everything we need to be a good producing harvest. Using the metaphor of grapes to speak about God's people. So that we may contribute to the flavor and the, and the life of others through who we are as people of God's kingdom. And so I think the scriptures invite us today, as they do so often, to listen to the message of God presented to us through the prophets, those of years past and those that are now with us also. Paul being one of them. And in today's beautiful second reading to the Philippians, he gave us a way to do that. He said, brothers and sisters, in everything you do, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And God who surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. What a beautiful way to say to us what we can be, what we can do in regards to our spiritual life, in regards to our faith. Because as he says to us also, 
God is the only one that is worthy of all praise, of everything that is good, of everything that is of excellence. And so the message for us is to hear the word of God sent to us through his messengers, through the prophets, so that we may be a truly good producing harvest, a harvest that will contribute to the well-being of this world, where there is so much other things open it, opposite to what God is all about. See, that's what the human person um, has been given, the grace, the faculty to be of God and even not to be. And when we are not of God, then we are contributed to his destruction, to his diminishment. And so let us pray, let us uh, strive to do the opposite, to be really good servants, as in the Gospels metaphor for today's Mass. Let us be good servants and listen to the message of God given to us over and over the times and receive God's message and especially his only begotten son in whom it is found the only one where the kingdom of God is truly present and he wants to offer it to us by receiving it in faith and like Paul says in prayer and in thanksgiving. <clears throat> Let us stand, brothers and sisters, and profess our faith. I believed in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten, no made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and women and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, St. Paul instructs us to present our needs to God in petitions full of gratitude. Let us pray them for our community, for the needs of the world, for peace in the Middle East, for the church at large in the world. That the church produce food for the kingdom of God through acts of love, humility, and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the world's citizens grow in reverence for the sanctity of all human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That refugees and immigrants be welcomed as children of God and receive the protection <coughs> and assistance they need. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who carry new life and those searching for a reason to enjoy it, that they may be comforted in the hope and joys life brings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who gather at this table of love see in one another's eyes the love of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For our sick, Frank O'Leary, Gaspari Cerullo, Ethan Cruz, Janet Fortier, Stanley Foy, and those listed in the bulletin, that the Lord will restore them to health. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those that have died in the peace of Christ, Eileen Rappaport, Rosalind Baker, and Manuel Leon Quintisaka, that they may be welcomed into the company of saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray especially today for peace in, in the Holy Land. And we remember our parish priest who is traveling with some pilgrims and who are now in that situation of conflict between the Palestines and Israel. That peace will prevail, that people will, will come to a, a reconciliation a conversation. And so peace may return to the Holy Land. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who created heaven and earth, protect what you have planted. Guide your people who pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The second collection today is in support for the Archdiocese of, of the Military Services. The offertory hymn is number 610, All Good Gifts. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice out of our hands for the, for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with beautiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and true. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by his birth he brought renewal to, hum to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, 
he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so now, with all the company of angels and archangels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. We give you praise, Heavenly Father, most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love, and you formed man and women in your own image, and entrusted them the whole world to their care, so that in serving you alone, their creator, he, he might, they might have dominion over all creatures, and went through disobedience, we lost your friendship. You did not abandon us to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek may find you. Time and again you offer us new covenants, and through the prophets taught us to look forward to salvation. And you so love the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Heavenly Father, as a first fruit for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, You know how they <laughs> that they might become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant for when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you Father most holy having loved his own who were in the world he loved them to the end and while they, and while they were at supper he took bread blessed and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you <clears throat> in a similar way taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples saying Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this always in memory of me. <clears throat> Let us proclaim the story of faith. Faith, your your death, O oh Lord, Lord, and the rest your resurrection until you come again. There 
Therefore, O oh Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O oh Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church in granting you loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gather it into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Holy Father, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, religious, both men and women, catechists, deacons, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. And we pray for all the members of this parish for whom we offer this Holy Eucharist. And to all of us, your children, also grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, free from the corruption of sin and death, we, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor, Saviors, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we are to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our thanks, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lived and reigned forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace. Take away the sin. 
Behold, brothers and sisters, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under, under my roof, but only, but only say, say the, the word, word, and my soul shall be. communion hymn is number 336, Pan de Vida. I need the Lord 
more than I can tell. I need the Lord, this I know so well. I need the Lord. This coming Friday, October 13th, the church is going to observe the Blessed Mother's final public appearance to the children in Fatima and also the occurrence of the miracle of the sun. So right here in the church from 8 a.m. in the morning till 6 p.m. in the evening time, there will be a day long of praying the rosary. So all are welcome to attend. It will be both in English and in Spanish as well. So you can come at any time throughout the day from 8 a.m. in the morning till 6 p.m. in the evening time to pray the rosary this coming Friday, October 13th. And finally, on Monday, October 23rd, will be the next Italian Mass here in the church. It will begin at 7 p.m., followed by refreshments downstairs in the Father Wilson Hall. Monsignor Frankel will be back to celebrate the next Italian Mass. In the bulletin this week, you're going to see this flyer. If you can please take this flyer home and share it with your family and friends and invite them to the next Italian Mass on Monday, October 23rd at 7 p.m. As always, please take the bulletin home. There's always important information in the bulletin that might not be said in the announcements. This weekend, we bid a fond farewell to Father Roberto. Father Roberto is always a big help to us whenever, whenever he comes to our parish to celebrate masses and hear confessions and also for spiritual direction. He heads back to California this coming Wednesday. Father, thank you so much for all your help. It's always a pleasure to have you here. And with your spirit. Be our defense against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell, Satan, and all other evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The recessional hymn is number 747, This Is My Song. This is my song, O God of all the nations, a song of peace for love. Far and by this is my home, the country where my heart is. Here are my hopes, my dreams, my holy shrine. hopes and dreams as true and high as 
nicht beliebt it up to all chasseurs and hearts united learn to live as one oh hello Self, I give thee, let thy 